Hello and welcome to EPIC. Are you wondering what is the currently most powerful terminal image device you can use on a gun for the civil market? Then let's have a closer look on the Tiger 6C Plus from Anders Defense, Berlin, Germany. Yes, you are right, it's English. It's the first video we produce on uh, EPIC, on the EPIC channel in English. And we have already done the review of the Tiger 6C Plus last year in German. But we get so much demand, so high demand on do this again in the English language, in the English version. Now we deliver. But by the way, all our videos had English subtitles on YouTube. So if you're interested in one of our other films, please go and enable the subtitles and you will understand everything we've done before. But now let's dive into the technical specification of the Tiger. Why the Tiger 6C Plus is one of the top thermal image devices on the market, we will now look in detail. The sensor resolution of the microbolometer is 640 by 512 pixels at 60 Hz. The next we have to look at the distance of the individual pixels and the pixel size, which is 12 microns. Standard is actually 17 microns. The third interesting point is the temperature resolution, which is just 40 millikelvin. The smaller the number, the finer the resolution of the individual temperature levels. On top, everything is included in a very small housing. The Tiger is just 11 centimeters long, 78 millimeters wide and only 80 millimeters high. The weight of the Tiger is only 491 grams, so less than 500 grams on the scale. The lens of the Tiger has a focal length of 55 mm and is quite impressive, especially if you compare it to other civilian devices on the market. The housing is entirely made of aluminium and coated with Cerakote. Anyone familiar with gun coating knows that Cerakote is uh, the hardest coating you can apply on a gun component as an alloy paint. Waterproof according to IP68, one meter water depth for two hours. So you don't have to worry if you are in the rain. So let's have a look on the housing. On the left side of the housing, see from behind, there are three elements. Two push buttons and a screw. The screw closes the battery compartment. So you can run the Tiger with either four 1, 2, 3 batteries, which you can buy all over the world, or two 2500 mA rechargeable batteries called 16650. Both solution will give between 9 and 10 hours of runtime and it is great and it's better to have the possibility to change batteries or accos especially if you have a device with its use outside with different temperature you don't want to rely on built-in batteries the two button number one at the bottom number two on the top have two functions button one press briefly adjust the display brightness there are eight settings from 0 to 7. In this shot we had to adjust the camera a little bit, otherwise it would be overexposed. But it shows that the device is usable for bright daylight and also can set up for night usage in order not to dazzle. If you fully press and hold button 1, it will calibrate the device. It can be done a different way too, we will show that later. Button 2 has also two modes. You can switch through the color presets, the different display modes. You have several modes which you can also turn off because you don't really need all in daily use. 
If the button is pressed briefly, the zoom level can be changed. And we talk about the zoom level of the tiger. You must never forget that we are looking at a display. The display of the tiger, not directly through your scope. If you change the magnification of your rifle scope, you zoom into the display. And this will become an unsharp, very pixeling view. For this, the tiger is capable to zoom in by himself. That's a very interesting point, but more later. Button 3 and 4 are on the top and on the back side. These are mainly for the menu navigation. Button 4 is also for switching the device on and off, but it is a much better option to turn the tiger on and off more in a second. Let's look at the impressive front. It can be closed with a plastic cover. The cover is held in place with a bungee cord. It also has an integrated magnet switch. With that, the device turns off when you close the cover and turns on if you open it. Pretty easy, right? Furthermore, it is used for the calibration. When you close the cover for half of a second, the tiger will be calibrated silently. Calibration means that the device will be matched to the ambient temperature. The temperature where the device is and the ambient temperature which is measured. Everything must be harmonized. This is what it means by calibration. If the cover is closed longer than 1.5 second, the device will turn off. With that, the device is easy and fast in standby and back in active mode. On the back, there is an external thread. This is meant for screwing on a display magnifier. With a magnifier, you convert the Tiger into an observation device, which is so-called dual-use device. So you can use it as a designated observation device or with an adapter to mount it on a weapon. This is the second purpose of the external thread. You can screw on a clamp adapter. But before, let's look at the bottom of the Tiger. Here we find a few thread holes. First, it's a quarter inch thread that is standard for ball heads if you want to use the tiger on a tripod as an observation device for example. Then you have eight additional holes for adapter plates. These adapter plates are available from 36 up to 48 mm high to put a quick detach mount from Aerotex for example. With that you can put the device directly on a Picadini rail perfectly in front of your rifle scope and you will have a very good compact solution. The plates are not included or available at Andres Industries but from Heptagon. The link is in the description. The second mounting option is to clamp the Tiger on your rifle scope. For that you can use a Rusen adapter. Rusen Micron is a company from Croatia they offer a wide variety of adapter for optical devices. So for example to clamp the device like a tiger on a scope. The advantage of the Rusen adapter is they are inexpensive. Available in different sizes you only need the outside diameter of your scope. It's the best to measure with a tape measure to determine the correct size. In this case we have a 62 mm adapter which is placed over the scope. You can adjust it with a screw so it doesn't move. Then it's perfect. Maybe not perfect. The disadvantage of this clamp is you put it on a circular object. The circular object means you have no automatic alignment. And of course you should make sure that it's perfectly aligned. We not only want to watch we want to do a safe shot. You have to take extreme care that the Rusen adapter is exactly aligned to the same position the device is zeroed. But even if the thread fits on the Tiger, the clamp can sometimes stop at the bottom, for example. For that issue, there is a small screw on the Tiger to align the clamp position. It's a little but important detail. There are two options to mount the Tiger on the weapon. First to mount directly on the scope with a clamp adapter. This is the most what hunters will do, simply because the weapon has no other options. 
If you have uh, a weapon with a Picadini in front of the scope, like an R15 system or advanced sniper rifle systems with a night vision bridge, like here with the Remington 700 using a Magpul 700 Pro stock, not a typical hunter weapon by the way, if you would use something like that, you can mount a Tiger in front of the scope. The advantage is obvious. You have a very high return to zero. If you always use the same slot at a rail, then it's like a good scope mount. You can take it off and on again without losing the zero. This is not that simple with the clamping adapter. One thing in advance, you can see a small gap between the Tiger and the scope. This is normal and also necessary because the device must be mounted somehow. You can't place it seamless. And here you have a look with a night vision device, an NVG. And you can see there is no light. The display of the Tiger is deep inside the housing. You don't have to be afraid that the light that comes out will give you away. Then more likely the light that comes through the scope to your eyes. The Tiger is on the rifle. Now you have to check if the picture of the scope and the Tiger are equal. We prepare a shooting target with a piece of metal in the center. Martin puts his thumb on the metal plate for a few seconds. The piece of metal was warm enough to see it through the thermal device. It's important to do this in 1x magnification. This is the original picture of the Tiger. Other magnification like 2x, 4x, 6x will show up different aiming points. The reason is the Tiger is not set up for this magnification yet. You have to do this one by one. Each rifle scope has a different physical and optical property. And the Tiger has to be adjusted to that. The Tiger comes with a fairly good adaption. It calls collimation. In 1x magnification, the first shot should be very close to your normal point of aim without the thermal device, so with your normal scope. If everything is aligned with 1x, you can adjust further magnification level. You can do this in half pixel steps to adjust exactly to the radical. Because every rifle scope is different, you have to do this with every different scope again. The software provides six slots to store the settings for six different scopes, with one, two, four and six X for each rifle scope. If you use different scope and switch between them, you only need to load the presets and you can use the Tiger instantly. In contrast to NVGs, the thermal image device can also be used during the day, just before the sunset here, the scope only and with the Tiger. The magnification of the Tiger will help seeing more details. To be clear, if you want to shoot the deer, you would have to use the normal rifle scope in this light condition and not with the Tiger. That's just for illustration. Regarding illustration, of course, except of the hunting footage, everything else is done with the camera behind the scope and the thermal device was not on a rifle. We have a special setup here. Tripod with a Picadini rail, mount scope on the Tiger attached and we, have, we haven't aim on Martin at any time or other people or any rooftops. And as I mentioned before, please take care on your local regulations, rules and laws. For instance, in Germany, in this configuration, like a, a observation device, it's legal for everybody. But with this, with an attachment to put it on a gun, it's restricted and only for authorities and hunters. Our conclusion of the Tiger 6C Plus. For sure, with all the feature, it's simply the absolute top model at the moment that you can buy on the civilian market. The processing is flawless and little things like the adjustment screws for the adapter or other brilliant features, we really like it all. The software is a bit more complex, but it doesn't matter because most things you only do once anyway. 
and then you take a look into the manual. For the collimation, you can't find deep details in the manual of the Tiger 6C+, but there is a Tiger 6M, the military version of the thermal device. This is a version of the Tiger with an optional own reticle. The link to the instruction of the Tiger M and a proper description of the collimation can be found in the video description below. If you wonder that the German and the current English version is different from the runtime, you are right. The English is a little bit shorter because in the German version I take really care to explain in detail what you have to know in Germany if you handle with a night vision and a gun together. So we have rules, regulations and laws. As I mentioned before, if you like to watch other movies from our channel, you are really, really welcome. If you don't understand German, put on the subtitles and you're good to go. If you like to give us a thumb, we really appreciate this. If you want to subscribe, then please ring the bell for further notifications of other videos. For this, in best regards, stay safe.